Hi loves and welcome back to my channel and our channel today. My name is Chidin Mahari and on today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to cut and sew a flounce starting with the rose flounce on the screen. How to structure a flounce and the different possible forms a flounce can take. If this sounds like what you are interested in then come with me on this one. So right here, you can see me fold a fabric that is doll face satin, two yards. I folded it once, then twice. This is the second time I'm folding it. I'll go ahead and fold it again. That is the third time, meaning now it has about eight layers. Yes, it has eight layers. So as you can see me do, I have positioned it in a way that I will find the center of this fabric to find the center of this fabric i'll be measuring the length and the width of the fabric as you can see me do so i've measured it and i will find the mid mid midpoint of this so that is what i just marked so if you get 20 the mid is 10 just half of whatever measurement you get and right here i'm also measuring the length also here, I divided what I got by two and I marked the middle. The intersection of the two lines marked is the middle of this fabric. And from this point, I'm measuring to two inches. I want to draw a circle of radius two inches. So that is what I'm trying to achieve. Trying to connect the circumference of the circle. I've finished joining the joining around the circle and I've gone ahead. I'll go ahead now and measure the length of my flounce. Feel free to choose any length you desire. So right here you can see that I have chosen four and a half inches. That is the length I want my flounce to take. This flounce is actually for a sleeve but i'll be using it first to show you how a rose flounce is made please pay attention pay attention very very well be very attentive so that you will understand every bit of the thing i'm going to do so after making this you're going to choose a point at the first circle circumference and join it to the second circle yes that's it so right here, I'm going to start measuring from this new circle. Watch closely. I'm cleaning the old line just there. Just there. So I'm continuing to measure four and a half inches from the new line. I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm trying to clean the old line that I don't need anymore. So I'm measuring four and a half inches. I'll go ahead to measure four and a half inches all through, but I want to note here that for this rose flounce, if you're measuring four and a half inches at this stage that I am here right now, this level of the third circle, you should be able to increase it for this rose flounce. But because I want to use this flounce for a sleeve, I didn't increase it. Because I have another purpose that I want to use it for. The rose flounce has an equal, an equal size all through, if you watch it closely. But because of what I want to use this for, I did not make it unequal. I make mine totally four and a half inches. But I believe with this explanation, you will understand. So it's supposed to be four and a half. And as you progress, you will increase to maybe five and a half or even six inches to give you that on equal rows so that the inner part will be the smallest and it will get bigger as it comes out so right here i'm cutting out the flounce i hope you understand i want to repeat myself that for the rose flounce exactly the way it is on the picture as you progress this 
measurement will increase. It won't be four and a half all through like I did. But I believe with this explanation, you will understand perfectly. So this is what I have. I'll go ahead and cut it out. I'll go ahead and cut it out. Watch closely. It's an easy tutorial and I expect you to understand perfectly. So I've finished cutting it out. I've cut out the middle piece, the little circle. Yeah. And I'll drop it aside because it's no more needed. Right here, I'm counting the number of pieces. And it's, it was eight. Eight pieces of the flounce. So each will serve as lining of the... I'm using it as lining and, as, and also as the main fabric. This is what I'll be using to structure this flounce. That is the Rigelin bone. Rigelin bone. So that is what I have there. I'll be using it to structure the hem. This is the sleeve I originally, in fact, that I am using this flounce on. So, but I will be doing the rows before I come back to this sleeve. I'm just trying to measure what I need this flounce for. So watch what I'm measuring. I'm measuring the distance I'll be putting the flounce so that I will know how I am going to join this flounce. After measuring, I got a total distance of about 65 inches. Now, measuring the flounce, I got about 60 inches, meaning I'm supposed to join. Just measure wherever you want your flounce to cover, and then you go ahead and measure your flounce to be sure that it will cover that distance. If it will not, then you will need to join your flounce. For my own case, I am joining the flounce. I join the two two. One will serve as the main fabric and the other will serve as the lining. So two piece main fabric, two pieces lining. So that will give me about... By the time I finish joining, it's going to give me two pieces of very long flounces. Watch closely and you will understand perfectly what I'm doing. Right here, I've joined it and I'm going ahead to iron this place. So I've ironed it. One will serve as the main fabric while the other will serve as the lining. I did it like this twice, which gave me two flounces. I hope you understand for the two sleeves. But that is not the first thing I'm going to do. But I just want to join it first. I'm going to do the rows first. The rows that you can see on the screen. That is what I'm going to do first. This tutorial is quite lengthy, but I know that you will understand. Not too, too lengthy. I couldn't help it, but to show you different ways a flounce can be used. I'm going ahead to notch it after joining the hem. You can see that I've already joined the hem. I've already joined the main fabric and the lining together. And I'm going ahead to notch. Notching is very important if you want your flounce to relax. So the next thing is to top stitch. Very important. You top stitch and iron out. Top stitching helps you to iron smoothly without having, you know, trouble flattening your ironing edge. So after I have ironed, the next thing to do is to run that stitch that you can see there. You can see the stitch that I ran on top there. Please, you will make sure that this stitch that you ran is not too big for the rigeline boning, but not too small that it will be difficult to pass. So I'm going ahead to pass my rigeline bone along the hem of this very flounce. You can see I have completed it. 
I have completed it. See how beautiful the flounce is looking, coiling on its own, so lovely. So right here, I will show you how the rose is being made. I will show you how. You can see the flounce coiling on its own. Here I have my needle and my thread. I'll go ahead and form gather. I'm trying to form the rose right now. I'm forming gather stitches as you can see me do. Form gather stitches. And as you are forming, you are making a circle with it. That is how to form the rose flounce. You know that because mine is equal everywhere, the rose flounce is looking equal. If you don't want it to look this equal, you will increase it as you progress while drafting the flounce from four and a half to like six inches or five and a half inches. Right here, I'm trying to form the rose. I don't want to cut off that place because of what I want to use it for, but I believe you understand. The rose has already been formed, looking beautiful. I even went ahead to form it completely, like if you want it to be a fuller rose, just as you can see on the screen. Very beautiful. So now I'm going ahead to use it on the sleeve, as you can see. This is a raglan sleeve that I've already cut and prepared. I want to work this flounce all over the sleeve. What I did was to measure two inches first from the hem. And I'll be marking with a chalk. After these two inches, I will measure the rest one one inch all through. I, I did it on both sides, as you can see me do. This is so that while I apply my flounce, I won't be looking for the level I'll be measuring all over. I'll just see the markings and follow the markings. I'm taking one inch right now. I'll also be doing this for the front and the back. Right here, I'm loosening the rows that I formed to use it to work on the sleeve. You can see what I'm doing right now. I'm working this on the sleeve. As you are working it on the sleeve, avoid the seam allowances. That is what I'm pointing there. So I've started working it on the sleeve, following the lines that I drew. You can see how I am attaching it. Watch closely to understand how I am attaching it. Sorry, I could not capture the sewing parts because this video is already so, so long. But I believe you will understand. Right here, I, you can see how I'm attaching the flounce, how I'm flipping it over. Watch carefully how I flipped it over to continue sewing. You can use your pin and pin it down because these coils, they can be worrisome though, but not as worrisome as not being able to be managed no not like that so right here you can see what i did i've gone ahead to stitch that one down i'll flip it over again but make sure this sewing doesn't get to the seam allowance very important yes don't let it get to your seam allowance always avoid wherever you want to leave for stitching so I've pinned it down and I'll go ahead and sew down again on the next one inch spacing. So that is what I continue doing till I finish fixing it. This is what I got after I finished fixing the flounce on the sleeve. This is to be attached on a dress, on a blouse rather. Right here, I can't help but show you how to attach a flounce again. This one is not stabilized. You can also stabilize this flounce with crinoline. But this one right here has not been stabilized. So I just joined it together and top stitched. I want to show you another way to run a cascade. You can use it as a cascade on a dress. Gown, skirt, anyhow you want it. 
So right here, I'm going to use these flounce to form a cascade. Watch closely so that you understand how this is done. This is how to form a cascade. Beautiful. This is how to form a cascade with a flounce. This is a picture of how a cascade is used on a dress. You can see how beautiful that picture is looking. So this is a cascade, also done with a flounce. Here is the rose, done by walking the flounce through the spiral lines, like what I drew while drafting the flounce. Draw the same on the sleeve that this is to be attached and walk the flounce through it from the smallest to the biggest circle. Remember to stabilize the hem with crinoline. This is crinoline. Okay? Thanks for watching, guys. And see you in the next one. Bye.